Hi friends, my name is Nandita. I am from Andhra Pradesh. Children, the wide range in the structure of higher plants will never fail to fascinate us. Even though the angiosperm show such a large diversity in external structure or morphology, they are all characterized by presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers, and fruits. In chapter two and three, we talked about classification of plants based on morphological and other characteristics. For any successful attempt. at classification and at understand any higher plants so we need to know understand technical terms and standard definitions we also need to know about the possible variation in different parts found as adaptations of the plant to their environment examples adaptations to various habitats for protection climbing storage etc if you pull out any weed you will see that all of them have roots stems and leaves they may be bearing flowers and fruits also the underground part of the flowering plant is the root system while the portion above the ground forms the shoot system now let us discuss about flowering plants The plant body consists of main axis which may be branched or unbranched bearing lateral appendages. The main axis is divided into two of the plant that is root system and shoot system. The underground root system develops from the radical embryo and helps in fixation of the plant as well as absorption of water and minerals. Shoot system The aerial shoot system develops from the plumulae embryo. It contains root, stem, leaves as vegetative parts and flowers. Fruits and seeds as reproductive parts. The vegetative parts are involved in various vegetative functions like structural organization, fixation, absorption, nourishment, growth and maintenance of various components and maintenance of various components. Reproducting parts are for sexual reproduction and germination of new plants now let us uh, discuss about the root in plant the root is the non green cylindrical and the descending part that normally grows downwards into the soil it does not bear leaves buds and not distinguished into nodes and internodes in majority of the dicotyledonous plant the direct elongation of the radical leads to the formation of primary root which grows inside the soil it bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary tertiary etc the primary roots and its branches constitute the tap root system has seen in the mustard plant In monocotyledonous plants the primary root is short lived and it is replaced by large number of roots these roots originate from the base of the stem and constitute the fibrous root system as seen in the wheat plant in some plants like grass monster and the banyan tree roots arises from the parts of the plant other than the radicel and are called advantageous roots the main function of the root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil providing a proper anchorage to the plant parts storing reserve food material and synthesis of plant growth regulators let us discuss the reason of the root a typical root containing the following five reasons however there is no clear line of distinction between these reasons let us discuss about root cap the root is covered at the apex by a tibial or a cap like structure called the root cap it protects the root meristem from friction of the soil particles and also protect tender apex which allows the passage of root through cells examples of this are lamina and echoroinia
the second one is growing point it is also called meristematic zone the growing point or meristematic zone is a small means about 1 mm in length thin walled region having dense protoplasm it lies partially within the partly beyond the root cap it cell divider regularly and repeatedly for elongation it is responsible for the growth of the root the third one is zone of elongation the zone of elongation it is situated behind the meristematic region means growing point the cells elongated speedily and increases the length of the root the cells of this region can absorb water and minerals from the soil fourth one is root hair zone it is the region where primary tissues differentiate into the root the vascular tissues like xylem and phloem are formed in this region root hair zone is the most important part of the root for absorption of water from the soil the root hairs increase the exposed surface of the roots for absorption zone of maturation this zone contains mature cells it forms the permanent zone of the root and also gives out lateral roots from the interior part of this region example in dicots and gymnosperms the roots of parasitic plants lack root caps in aquatic plants root hairs are usually absent types of roots there are five types of roots mainly and these are primary roots fibrous roots adventitious roots aerial roots and prop roots examples of tap roots are conical roots fusiform roots napiform roots tuber roots nodulated roots now let us discuss about types of root system root system can be of two types on the basis of place or origin first one is tap root system the tap root main root of primary root system growing vertically downward most dicotyledonous plants such as dandelions produce tap roots and some such as the edible roots of carrots and beetroots are specialized for food storage the tap root develops from the radical of embryo of a seed in most of the plants primary roots persist and become stronger to form tap root the first root forms by the elongation of radical and it is called primary root it continuously grows and produces lateral roots called secondary roots the further branches of the secondary roots are called tertiary roots and so on these types of roots are present in dicots examples pea gram groundnut etc most dicotyledonous plants such as dandelions produce tap roots and some such as edible roots of carrot and beetroots are the specialized for food storage as already we discussed earlier now let us discuss the modifications of tap root the tap roots are modified for the functions like storage nitrogen fixation and respiration first let us discuss about uh, conical roots these are fleshy tap roots that resemble a cone means a broad at the base and gradually tapering towards the apex examples are carrot next one is fusiform roots the primary root is spindle shaped it, it is swollen in the middle and gradually traps at both the ends example radish napiform roots the primary root system is almost spherical at the base and traps abruptly at the lower end example beetroot turnip etc tuberous roots the primary roots become thick and fleshy but do not attain any definite shape means irregular shape examples are four clock plant Echinocytosis, lobata, etc. Next one 
nodulated tap roots in this the secondary tertiary and sometimes primary roots bear many small irregular swellings called root nodules which contain countless minute nitrogen fixation bacteria of genus rhizobium examples of this are groundnut clover pea pisum setavium etc Now let us discuss about fibrous roots. There are underground roots which arises in a group from the nodes of an horizontal stem. The main roots are of equal length. They give off small branches. Both the main root and their branches are thin and thread-like structures. Therefore, they are called fibrous roots. The fibrous roots do not penetrate deep in the soil. They remain near the soil surface and are called surface feeders. Examples of this are wheat rice onion etc now let us discuss about adventitious roots the roots developing from any part of the plant other than the radicle are known as adventitious roots these are usually found in monocots the branch like the tap root a mass of adventitious roots along with their branches constitute an adventitious root system This adventitous root system may be underground or aerial. They generally develop from stem nodes, internal nodes, leaves, etc. Horizontal stem of creepers often develop adventitous roots from the nodes. Examples of grass, wood sorb, dal, etc. Branch cutting or leaf cutting, rose and sugar cane, etc., develop adventitous roots when placed in the soil. In coleus, the cutting develops adventitious roots on being partially immersed in water. Hormones also induce development of adventitious roots. The adventitious roots can be further classified as on the basis of nature of development. modification of adventitious roots as follows the adventitious roots are modified to perform several additional functions like food storage mechanical support and other vital functions the first one is fleshy adventitious roots the adventitious roots become thick and fleshy due to the storage of food nodules roots these roots have swelling occurs only near the tips examples arrow root curcuma amad etc tuberous roots or single root tubers these are swollen without any definite shape the swollen roots do not assume a definite shape they occur singly like sweet potato etc prop or pillar roots the prop or pillar roots grow as the horizontal branches of the stem and grows vertically downwards they become thick pillars like and provide mechanical support to the gain tree examples of this are banyan tree slit roots these are small thick supporting roots growing obliquely from the basal nodes of the main stem These provide mechanical support of the plant. Example sugar and maize. Climbing or sealing roots. These roots are found in climbers. They may arise from the nodes. Examples money plant. Assimilatory or photosynthetic roots. These roots have chlorophyll and they can synthesize their own food. Example aerial or hanging roots of some orchids. parasitic or sucking roots these roots occur in parasitic plants for absorbing nourishment from their host these roots functions as hostoria example cascuta fasciculated fleshy roots the swollen roots or root tubers occur in cl- clusters in dandelia they lie at the base of the stem while in asparagus the fis- 
fasciculated fleshy roots occur at intervals on the normal roots palmate roots the fleshy roots are thickened like the palm of human hand they similarly possess finger like outgrowths example arches now let us discuss about modification of roots the modification or the changes in shape forms or structure in in an any organ to carry out special functions other than or in addition to the normal function modification of roots are found in both tap root and adventitious root system now let us discuss about the aerial prop and pillar roots aerial roots are roots that grow on the above ground of a plant aerial roots on woody vines functions as anchors fixed in the plant to support structures such as uh, trellises rocks and walls some types of aerial roots also absorb moisture and nutrients just like underground roots they are thick pillar like adventitious roots which grow from support heavy horizontal branches of banyan tree initially the roots are aerial and hygroscopic they become red in the moistened state root caps are present at their tips now let us discuss about the functions of roots the major function of roots are as follows fixation roots this roots provides fixation to the plant with soil absorption roots absorption roots absorb water and minerals from the soil and provide it to all parts of the body roots of many plants store food for the usage of other plant parts and for animals aeration plants grow in water logged soil or marshy areas have special roots that is pneumatospores for respiration conduction roots these roots transport water and minerals in upward direction for the uses of stem and leaves let us discuss the facts about roots a specimen of bosia albiturnica means shepherd tree in south africa was found to have roots extending downwards to a distance of 223 feet but there are probably deeper one out there some roots go very deep into the ground one root that was found in Arizona USA was 60 meters below the surface Some plants propagated through their roots and are commonly described as having running roots called stolons and rhizomes travel underground literally and send up a new shoots A banyan tree the great banyan tree growing in Indian Botanic Gardens Kolkata has 1775 prop roots it main trunk has decayed the crown of the tree has a circumference of 404 meters thank you